only the instantaneous characteristics <laughs> sir can you Hello? can you tell me what what does it mean by instantaneous characteristic so at any particular time instant if you like to find out the position or displacement velocity and acceleration so that particular time instant it will be valid okay so it it, it this particular concept the equivalent concept is valid only for kinematic analysis first of all it is not valid for the dynamic analysis because dynamic analysis dynamics depends on the mass property and inertia property for that it's not valid only instantaneous kinematic characteristics and instantaneous for a particular time instant for a complete cycle any time instant if you like to do the kinematic analysis then this equivalence will work but this equivalence will not work when you like to do the kinetic analysis clear okay sir thank you sir we have also discussed about the, de the definition of degrees of freedom and here the most important keyword is number of independent coordinate required to completely specify the configuration of a mechanism in motion in space or in plane also if you like to describe its motion in plane Now we have also discussed about the degrees of freedom of different kinematic joint or kinematic pair. You have seen that if a body in plane, it is having three degrees, three parameters, three independent parameters is required to completely describe its motion. Two for the position and one for the orientation, that means rotation in this case. Position in say XY plane and rotation about an axis perpendicular to that plane so these three parameter three independent parameter is required to describe a motion of solid object in plane but if it is in space then it becomes six parameter three in the x y z direction with three, three parameter for positional information and three for the orientation three rotation about x about y and about z for the orientation total six parameters is required when you like to describe a solid object in 3D space. When you like to uh, consider about the planar mechanism, as I mentioned, planar mechanism, the, 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 the locus of all point or the motion of all point lying in a parallel planes. And that is why you, you have to start with a for plane mechanism, the solid object you have to describe in plane and that is why degrees of freedom will be when it is free a particular object is free in 2d space then your degrees of freedom is free but if you consider in spatial mechanism that means space starts with the free, free body having degrees of freedom is six so whether you like to describe its motion in plane means plane or parallel planes or you like to describe in space depending on the free body having degrees of freedom is different in case of a plane is three parameters required that is a three degrees of freedom free body the same body if you like to describe in space and when it is in free then six parameters is required and that is where its degrees of freedom is six now i already explained that in mechanism if you join the arbitrary arbitrary number of links if you connect it to a number of kinematic joints may not result in a mechanism some condition must be satisfied for a system of interconnected bodies to serve as a useful mechanism and the foremost thing which has to be investigated is the mobility of the mechanism in terms of degrees of freedom and I already mentioned degrees of freedom uh, is defined as number of independent parameter or independent coordinate required to completely describe its motion in space or plane is known as degrees of freedom. And in order to calculate the degrees of freedom of a mechanism, I mentioned two ways you have seen 
one by physically you can see think that how many active joint is there that means the joint where actuators are connected that is the active joint in case of a four bar linkages in order to rotate the crank your motor has to be connected and other joint are called passive joint motion they are getting other joint motion is getting from the links previous link that means motion has been transmitted from the active joint to passive joint to the all other passive joint so by physically observing your the mechanism and its actuation you can easily find out what is the degrees of freedom or what are the minimum number of parameter required to completely describe its motion the equation for the for finding out the degrees of freedom of a planar mechanism or plane mechanism is 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 i j that i have explained in the last class that why n minus 1 because in a mechanism of having n numbers of link then one link is a fixed link and fixed link have no degrees of freedom if all three motion has been restrained or constrained and that is why here total number of movable link is n minus one when it is free multiplied by three as it in plane case because i have already mentioned it, it is it, it is the plane first i like to derive in for the planar mechanism or plane mechanism that means a body in plane having three degrees of freedom so that is it is multiplied by three and when one by one if you apply the constraint that means you create the joint then each revolute joint, it is a, a or prismatic joint, two motion had been constrained. That is why it is minus two multiplied by number of such joint. Now, what is J? J is the number of simple hinges or the first order joint or equivalent first order joint. A, now, as you know, that if you see a particular joint is maybe first order, if it is a first order joint, then the number of links connected for a particular joint is two and degrees of freedom equals to one. Clear? Now, if J is number of first order joint, or equivalent first order joint what do you mean by equivalent first order joint so let us say second order joint a second order joint having how many links it is connected a particular joint having three links are connected so this is the second order joint now second order joint how many parameters is required to describe this motion two one is delta theta two delta theta three with respect to this one that means its degrees of freedom is two. If this joint having degrees of freedom is two, that means how many degrees of freedom has been restrained? So it is equal to how, how many one degrees of freedom joint? Degrees of freedom to uh, the first order joint degrees of freedom equals to one. This is the first order joint. Degrees of freedom equals to one. Now, this is the second order joint, degrees of freedom equal to two. Now, can you, can you not say that a second order joint equals to two first order joint? A second order joint. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A yes, sir. second order joint equals to two first order joint because each first order joint having one degrees of freedom. If you consider two first order joint, then one plus one, two degrees of freedom second order joint is also having two degrees of freedom similarly and that is why i see here j1 uh, j equals to j1 j1 means first order joint number of first order this one. j1 here j1 is the number of first order joint because its degrees of freedom is one but if in mechanism is second order joint is exist now you know one second order joint equals to equivalent to two first order joint and that is why j2 is the number of second order joint multiplied by two because uh, the one second order joint equals to two first order joint so that is a two multiplied by number of 
second order joints and so on similarly if it is the third order joint that means three four links are connected degrees of freedom equals to three and that means degrees of freedom three means three numbers of first order joint that means three numbers of first order joint one third uh, third uh, third order joint equals to three numbers of first order joint so that is why equivalent first order joint equal to thrice multiplied by number of third order joint so equivalent in this way you can find out a particular order of joint corresponding to equivalent first order joint so here j is equivalent first order joint or in other word you can say j equals to number of first order joint plus equivalent first order joints plus all equivalent first order joints so any doubt here or if you have doubt it will be more clear if with the example i will show you just afterward and i the same way the ith order joint is equivalent to i numbers of first order joint or simply that means put i equal to 2 then uh, the second order joint is equivalent to two numbers of first order joint put i equal to 3 then third order joint is equivalent to the three numbers of first order joint and so on now a mechanism will be constraint a mechanism is called constraint mechanism when degrees of freedom equals to one now we put degrees of freedom equals to one then mechanism is said to be constraint and this equation becomes just put f equal to one and just sim if equal to one and simplify you will get the 2j minus 3n plus 4 equals to zero so this equation after putting degrees of freedom equals to one for constraint mechanism so a mechanism having one degree of freedom is called the constraint mechanism and that sense that your four bar linkages and slider curve mechanism both are constant mechanism and this equation is known as this is this criteria is known as Grubler's criteria that is coming from Kuchback equation only from the Kuchback equation putting degrees of freedom equals to one the equation you will get that is called the Grubler's criteria so it is nothing new only it is Kuchback equation only that equation put degrees of freedom equal to one for a constant mechanism now the if this particular equation is valid when it consists of only lower pairs this equation Kuchback equation here mentioned it is valid only there is a lower pairs there is no other thing like redundant degrees of freedom then only it is valid but there are many mechanisms consist of lower pair as well as the higher pair if higher pair will exist then your equation has to be modified Kuchback equation has been modified into this first part is dimension thrice into n minus one minus twice j minus h where h is the number of higher pairs where h is the number of higher pairs now as you know that higher pair you have seen this is the example of higher pair now one higher pair equivalent to two lower pair so because of this one higher pair there is a two lower pair what are the two lower pair one is this rotation another is this translation that means one higher pair having equivalent lower pair having two two uh, kinematic uh, pair and each kinematic pair having one degrees of freedom that means one higher pair equals to two degrees of freedom you can say in this equivalent system one higher pair equals to two degrees of freedom because you have seen one higher pair equals to two lower pair of one degrees of freedom each lower pair having one degrees of freedom plus one plus one two two degrees of freedom and that is why how many constant only one constant you have made one higher pair means only one constant and that is why here the equation it is one multiplied by h number of constant is one so one multiplied h equals to h only so this will be a equation so h is the number of higher pairs in your mechanism there are another uh, thing it exists in a mechanism that is redundant degrees of freedom 
for example this to this to example you see if you rotate this one so uh, if you rotate this cam so this is the follower and the in the follower having this roller now let us say this is free if it is not free if it is free then only there will be redundancy will be there when this one will rotate like this because of the rotation and you see it is not in the center axis of rotation is not at the geometrical centroid it is offset it from here because of this offset it, it rotation axis is this one and its radius or the point distance from the axis will vary so when it will rotate then this will move and this sorry this roller will move up or down depending on its profile and that is why it is called the cam and this is the follower now if there is a rotation permit here so the revolved joint is exist now if it will rotate at all then this rotation will not contribute to the motion of the follower follower will move due to this rotation only whether this will be fixed roller will be fixed over the link the follower or it will free over the follower it is immaterial you think properly you can easily understood that only yes, due to rotation of the cam rotation of the cam because cam is centrically placed rotation of the cam this follower will rock a follower will uh, rotate like this it is immaterial whether this roller is rotating or it is not rotating now if such joint is joint number 3 is exist or the this, this this particular joint is exist in mechanism free joint but it has no application in a force transmission so that this degrees of this degrees of freedom is known as redundant degrees of freedom that means if a link can be moved without causing any movement of the rest of the mechanism then that link is said to have a redundant degrees of freedom here link number 3 having the redundant degrees of freedom similarly because that roller 3 the link number 3 that means roller can rotate without causing any motion to the rest of the mechanism neither follower nor the cam so that is why this is having the redundant degrees of freedom if redundant degrees of freedom is exist then your formula becomes again change effective degrees of freedom of a mechanism having higher pair as well as the redundant degrees of freedom equation becomes like this Twice into n minus one minus twice a minus h minus f r. F r is the number of such degrees, redundant degrees of freedom is exist that you have to check. Now here see another example in this this particular slider, slider three can slide. So keeping the, this is stationary, this this crank stationary, follow stationary, it can slide. It it, it that that sliding movement. will not cause any movement to the rest of the mechanism so that means this this is also having redundancy or redundant degrees of freedom so if you found any such redundancy in your mechanism that has to be that number has to be the number of such redundant degrees of freedom has to be subtract from the your previous equation that means this equation actual actual your kujback equation to get the effective degrees of freedom of the mechanism now same concept of the the degrees of freedom you have calculated for the plane mechanism or planar mechanism that concept can be extended for the to calculate degrees of freedom of the spatial mechanism though a spatial mechanism analysis you will not learn in the theory machine class but how to calculate that one only difference is is a, 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 a special mechanism you know the oh, the points of a mechanism all points of mechanism is not lying in a parallel the motion of the all points of mechanism is not lying in a parallel plane that means when it's not satisfy the condition of the plane mechanism then it is called a special mechanism and as it is moving in the space a body free body in 3d space can be defined by completely defined by six parameters three for translation three for rotation that means having six degrees of freedom and that is why it in this calculation instead of three there will be six into n minus one because n minus one is reason you know because one link is fixed that is why total number of link minus one multiplied by six similarly the other pairs uh, 
uh, the uh, number of constraint you have to know is degrees of freedom of revolute pair is one if it is space before joining it was six now once you join then it becomes one degrees of freedom that means how much degrees of freedom you have lost can anyone tell revolute pair having five, one degrees five, of freedom five, 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 five. Revolute joint, prismatic joint, and the screw joint having one degrees of freedom, whether it will be in plane or space, whatever may be the case, degrees of freedom is one that you have seen in the last class. Now, in case of a plane, if it is the that particular link is free, that time it was three degrees of freedom, and once you connect it through the revolute joint, its degrees of freedom becomes one. That means how many degrees of freedom has been lost? Two. Two. Previous case. But when you consider in space, now you are you are considering that same joint in not in plane. It is in space because we are considering the spatial mechanism. But degrees of freedom of the pair is remain same one, whether it will be space or the plane. Degrees of freedom of that joint is one. But when joint has not been created, that time that link having how many degrees of freedom? Six in space. Yes, sir. Now, yes, one two. Joint the revolute joint, it degrees of freedom becomes one. Then how many has been lost? Five, 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 five. and that is why it is multiplied by five multiplied by number of revolute pair minus five multiplied by prismatic pair minus five multiplied by number of screw pair. Got my point? This one. Similarly, yes, you just see cylindrical pair having two degrees of freedom. That means how many lost? Four. So that four. is uh, four multiplied by three. Spherical pair, how many degrees of freedom? Three. Three. How many are three? Three. Uh, sir, I don't understand. Hello? Yes. So, a particular joint, I already explained degrees of freedom. So, revolute pair degrees of freedom is one, whether it will be described in plane or space, whatever may be the case. Similarly, the prismatic joint having degrees of freedom one, screw joint is degrees of freedom is one, a cylindrical joint degrees of freedom is two, spherical joint degrees of freedom is three. Whether it will be in plane or space, irrespective of that, this is the degrees of freedom. Now, when you describe a particular <laughs> mechanism in plane, Hello, sir. A body in a plane free, that time it having three degrees of freedom. But a body in space having the six degrees of freedom. Now, when the body is joined through a one degree of freedom joint, like revolute joint, in case of a plane, two degrees of freedom has been lost. And that is why in the equation it will be minus 2j. But same joint, if you can create in the three degrees of freedom, means in special case, then the, in special case, free body having six degrees of freedom. Once you create the joint of one degree of freedom, then how many degrees of freedom has been lost? Six minus one, five degrees of freedom has been lost. That means number of constraint is five. Sir, 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 can beat? Hello? Sir, listen, can repeat? listen carefully. It's uh, you have to think, or you uh, you, you just listen once sir, again. Sir, it is actually a wall cracking. Uh, in video lecture or in offline, you just uh, tell me what is your problem, okay? Okay, sir. So now degrees of freedom you have to calculate. So quickly uh, try to identify how many links are there. Please be muted. Sir, six link in the first picture. Look at carefully. This one. First, six link. Hey, somebody is not muted. Please be muted. Eight links are there. Sir, eight links are. For eight links. Eight links. Eight links. Eight links. Eight, eight links. How many joints? Please be muted. Somebody just uh, in unmute condition and there is a noise is coming. Eight joints. Eight joints. Hey, who is creating noise? 
Binai, Binai, who is Binai? How many joints? Sir, eight joints. Eight joints. Type of joint? A joint so of identified five. Number, of, number of links is eight. Number of links eight. Number of joint is eight. Number of joint. I am not Seven. writing J. Number of joint is Seven. how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many joints? Eight joints. Nine. Nine, sir. Nine, sir. Nine. Nine, nine. Nine, sir, because there is a ternary joint also. Sir, nine. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight nine number of links one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, uh, type of joint one by one, I didn't find what type of joint means order of joint. Everything is first order, oh, one is first order. So this, this one is uh, one by one. This, this joint is first order. First order. First order. This joint is first order. First order. First order. This joint is first order. First order. This joint is second order. Second order. This is second order joint. That means second order joint. This one is first order. First order. First order. This one first first order. This one first order. First This one first order. First order. And this one first. That means J one equals to how much? J one equals to eight. And how how many second order? J2 eight. equals to number of second order joint equals to two. One. 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 Now degree of freedom find out. Now it is mechanical. No. Your J equals to you already know. J equal J equals to J1. J equals to J1 plus. You know the J equal J equal J equal to J1. Plus twice multiplied by J2. So put the value. What is the degree of freedom? There is no redundant degrees of freedom. Sir, one. No half pair. Sir, one degree of freedom. One degree of freedom. Okay. Now next one. How many components? Six, sir. Sir, six. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. Six links. N equals to six. Then you identify the type joints. This is the joint. What type of joint it is? A joint or pair? What is First order. This one. First order. First order. First order. First order. First order. This one. First order. First order. First order. First order. First order. This one. First order. First order. This one. Second order. 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 And here also uh, the link number one and link number three. Another joint is uh, another pair. Lower pair. Lower pair. Higher pair. Higher pair. The line contact. Higher pair. Higher pair. So that means how many higher pair? How higher pair equals to one. 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 Now J one equals to how many? One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Five. J one is five, no one, five, two, five. three, four, five. J two equals to one, 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 
J2 equals to 1. Now, now you can easily calculate the degrees of freedom. J equals to J1 plus twice J2. Other is 0. Means J3 is not there. Twice into J2. Now you find out degrees of freedom. 2. Okay, you just find out this it's mechanically you can easily find out the formula it is in in planar mechanism thrice into n minus one minus twice j where j equal to j1 plus twice j2 minus h there is no redundancy zero from the girl side Zero. 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 Two. From the from the girl side, any any other any different in opinion? Zero or two? Hello? On the guy side, tell uh, whether it will be zero or two. Anyone? Set two. So zero. Yeah. Somebody is telling two, somebody is zero, but formula zero. is very simple. Huh? Zero. And the formula is very simple. Thrice into n minus one minus twice so j, just... where j equals to add j1 plus twice j2. Yes, sir, zero. Why you are getting two answers? It's, it, is it is extremely sorry to say uh, it's a simple equation. Linear equation, putting the value, we are getting two different answers. So how it is possible? So which one, which one will be the correct answer? Zero, sir. Zero. So who, uh, who are the fellow getting the two also? Somebody zero, I don't know. So why this sort of things? They, Simple algebraic equation you are unable to do, it is surprised. You are you have entered in the NIT Durgapu and without knowing algebra or simple equation. And all data I have given here, you use only your calculator, even without using calculator, also you can do that. So this is the bad effect of MCQ, no? The exam, the MCQ, so um, uh, answer is given to you. Now, if you like to tell you the, find out the answer, that time you will give the multiple answer. Simple equation, multiple answer. So try to find out the degrees the same way you find out the degrees of freedom of this planar mechanism. Here also everything is given to you. You have to find, uh, put the value in the equation and if you are, uh, unable to operate, calculate it is very unfortunate. So next concept is the Grassoff law. So this is very important part because you know, you have to think practically. So it's very important consideration when you like to design a mechanism. That mechanism, one link has to be driven. That means there is active joint. And it is, it, it, for example, I have shown here the four bar linkage or four R linkages where the, 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 this is the fixed link. So this one is the fixed link and the, the, this is the crank. The, this rotating part, this was the crank. 
now crank has to rotate here you have to fix the motor motor has to be fixed so that it will rotate the crank now obviously the motor in the most of the times if you not control properly in the motor will rotate continuously that means you have to ensure that the input crank can make a complete revolution in your design if it is locked then it will break the full system motor will try to rotate continuously but it has been locked by the because of your poor design or incorrect design of a linkage design of a linkage means your link length is not proper so that is why if you can arbitrary number of links and arbitrary length if you can join it may not be a mechanism may not be useful mechanism now mechanism in which no link makes a complete uh, rotation so that case using motor without control motor can also control it will stepper motor one side it will say 30 degree move forward direction then again reverse direction that is also possible but if there is a continuous rotation motor you like to use and your design should be such that the crank should freely rotate full 360 degree rotation so for four bar linkages for the planar four bar linkages how you will check that particular condition the crank will freely rotate 360 degree for the, you have and that is why grassoff propose its law so grassoff law states that for a four bar linkages is valid for planar four bar linkages so the grassoff law is valid for planar four bar linkages and it states that the sum of the shortest and the longest link length cannot be greater than the sum of the remaining two length two link lengths if there is to be continuous relative rotation between two members so this statement is very important don't follow the indian book they are half hearted written book so that full statement of the grassoff law is the sum of the shortest and the longest link length cannot be greater than that means if it's the shortest link length is s and longest link length is l so summation of this s plus l cannot be greater than that means should be less than equal to the sum of the remaining two link length that means remaining two is the p plus q if most important thing if there is to be continuous relative rotation between the two members if you like to obtain the continuous relative motion between two members then it should follow this particular law and this law is proposed by grassoff and that is why it is known as grassoff law so grassoff law when you want continuous relative rotational motion between the two member then it should satisfy this condition length of the shortest link plus length of the longest link less than equal to the summation of the length of the other two links now if you see the accordingly sometimes it's called class 1 kinematic chain class 2 kinematic chain class 3 kinematic chain is the name only but you see here that your linkage if it satisfy this condition the condition is s plus l less than equal to p plus q is split it into two groups one is the s plus l plus s plus l less than p plus q another is the s plus l equal to p plus q both are basically gas of linkages the linkages four bar linkages satisfy the gas of law is known as grassoff linkages and there is a class 1 grassoff linkages and class 3 grassoff linkages or class 3 kinematic chain sorry class 1 kinematic chain is grassoff linkages and class 3 kinematic chain is also grassoff linkage now according to this law that there should be at least one link will be capable of making the full rotation with respect to other link it may be ground link or it may not be if it is with respect to ground link full rotation will taking place with respect to the ground link 
then that is called the full rotation of a particular link is taking place in respect of the ground link that means fixed link then that mechanism is categorized as the class 1 kinematic chain so i like to show you some example here and if it is not satisfied that this condition that means s plus l greater than p plus q then that linkage is that is also linkages that is also a mechanism but that known as non grassoff linkages or the class 2 kinematic chain now you just see the example of the inversion of that why inversion so in there are four bar linkages that means four possible way you can fix the link is satisfy the condition this one but there are four possibilities now four possibilities i like to show you instead of video i like to show you here so this is your kinematic a kinematic chain i supposed to draw a kinematic chain or i like to show so kinematic chain is like this so i like to draw this one is the mechanism and corresponding kinematic chain was simply this one this one the kinematic chain when it is not yet fixed to the any ground or nothing this is your kinematic chain now as you know in the in the shortest link at the figure is the s so this is s and longest uh, there will be one longest and s plus l uh, this this may be longest one in the in, in l now s plus l less than equals to the p plus q now this is the kinematic chain i have not yet fixed any link now you fix the longest link so this is the longest link you fix it then what you will get the ground either link adjacent to the shortest one to get that this is the shortest link it will act as a crank because you will get the full rotation one link will get the full rotation similarly opposite to this one if you get grounded then also shortest link you will get the full rotation but here the follower because this is called the crank this is called coupler and this is called the follower so two kinematic inversion you are getting when you fix the l and s will be your ground uh, connected to the uh, fixed link and it will shortest linkage act as a crank now if it is also true when you just uh, you just make it p is a ground this is the p is a ground and the shortest link is connected with this one here it will again you will get the crank s will act as a crank full rotation this will be follower having the rocker motion there is another inversion when the shortest link you just fixed it that means here the shortest you fix the shortest link fix the shortest link that has been shown here fix link you just shortest link you just fix it then also you will get the your these two links will be your rocker that means ground the link uh, sorry ground the shortest link uh, sorry i just done mistake the, the ground the shortest link that means this figure ground the shortest link and here that you you will get the if you ground the shortest link you will get here the full rotation of the your what you call this particular link the crank as you well the follower you will get the full rotation and that is why it is called the double crank mechanism so both link pivoted to the ground makes the complete revolution and this is basically known as double crank so first two is called the crank rocker mechanism because crank means if it is a full rotation then it is called crank rocker means it oscillate so here the smallest link has been full rotation that is a crank and follower is oscillating so that is a mechanism is crank rocker this this inversion also same third inversion you are getting small, if, if you just consider smallest link is your fixed link then the two links which is connected to the ground that is smallest link having complete rotation that means both are crank complete rotation means 
if a link having complete rotation then you can term as a crank so that is why both input and output link is called as a crank here and that is why it is double crank mechanism now if you ground that other link that all three is over so only remaining uh, uh, the thing which is remains the particular link that means q in this case then if you can fix the q then what you will get the, the what is q q is in, in respect to this this one opposite to the shortest link ground the link opposite to the shortest to get the grass of double rocker so in this case it, it, it has been mistake this is not s this is the opposite to s opposite to s that means this one you just fixed it then you will get uh, picture has been drawn somewhat wrong so both links which is connected to the ground link will oscillate so both having the oscillation so both having the oscillation then how it is the grass of link understood your coupler will full rotation coupler will rotate about this cg full rotation has been taken place so that is why it is a class 1 grass of linkage but both input and output link oscillate but coupler having full rotation but other case coupler don't have full rotation clear now if it is s plus l greater than p plus q non grass of linkages then you will not get the full rotation all inversion you will get only the rocker movement Ro double rocker movement it is called the double rocker movement or it sometimes triple rocker also because your coupler is also rock so input output and coupler all are rocking so that is sometimes called the triple rocker mechanism now last one is the when the it is again grass of linkages of class 3 kinematic chain s plus the condition equality condition will satisfy s plus l equals to p plus q so this is a special case a special grass of mechanism where you will get the parallelogram form parallelogram mechanism or you can get kite kind of mechanism you see the kite kind of mechanism will get that is it called detroid or the kite form so this is the two special uh, grass of linkages this both parallelogram form in parallelogram form the, the it is similar to your double crank and the, the deltoid form it is crank rocker you will get okay and inverted this one is called the anti parallelogram form so these three form of the uh, this three form of mechanism will get in in case of a the mechanism which satisfy s plus l equal to p plus q so this this is that is why it is called the special uh, uh, soft linkages class 3 kinematic chain now let me see uh whether video will work or not oh, sorry sorry so grass of law i already mentioned only like to show you that whether any animation is there or not let me check i forgot so you just see this is the double crank mechanism this is the four bar linkages this is the four bar linkages and this is the uh, this linkage you just see it is s plus l equals to p plus q why you know that this is the shortest link plus longest link this one equal to the remaining two because it is also shortest link and equal to the longest link got my point so this type of see a mechanism four bar linkage you have seen in the railway engine as well as the old car
So it's video. Just... Now, what type of, uh, uh, whether it will follow the bus of law or not? The animation of the mechanism is see whether it will follow in the bus of law or not. Can anyone tell? This no, is the sir. indicator mechanism. Whether it, is, no, it will consider as a bus of linkage or not? No. No, sir. No, sir. No, no because sir. No, no, sir. No, uh, no link in complete rotation has been taking place. Now, in this case, one important terminology you know is that a locus of any point on the floating link is known as Kapler curve. Okay. But uh, I think uh, it, it, it is not complete. If you can properly, uh, it, it, this is non Grassoff, you, you can make it Grassoff linkage by full rotation of the floating link. So that properly you have to find out the length of the uh, your length of the links. Let me check that whether So this one is the crank rocker, no? So this is the crank, full rotation, and the output link is the rocker. So this is the example of the S plus L less than or equal to P plus Q. So this is the example of the Grassoff linkage and the class one Grassoff linkage, S plus L less than P plus Q. So got my point? This is the example of okay. class one kinematic chain Grassoff link linkages. Now you see here, this is the input. Input end. This handle means you consider this as a motor. Now tell me it, it is. Grass of set. Crank rocker. Crank rocker. Plus one. This one is also crank rocker. Crank rocker. Crank rocker. Plus one. This one? Double crank. Double crank. Double crank. Double crank. It is also belongs to the class three. three. Class three. Class yes, sir. Class three. This one? Double rocker. The the double crank. Double crank. Double crank. Double crank, sir. Yes, double, double crank. crank. Yes. Double rocker. Double rocker mechanism. Double rocker. Double rocker, but uh, it double is rocker. Class, three, class one or class three or class two? Class one. Class two. Class, class one. one. Which one is the full rotation? Class one. Class one. Class one. Now, sir, which, oh, now you can think which one having the full rotation in this case? Kapler, one Kapler, 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 Kapler,
uh, rotation of the linkages that okay, that is the non grass of linkages now I like to conclude by coming this two slide is left for the introductory chapter that index of merit. So there are some parameters of the mechanism proposed by various kinematician or the researcher that tells us whether a mechanism is good one or the poor one. Good one in the respect that from the mechanical advantage point of view. So such indexes of merit are called the mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage, you know, the ratio of the output torque exerted by the driven link, that means follower, to the necessary input torque required at the driver, that means crank. So mechanical advantage equal to output by input. Output torque divided by input power T4 by T2. And in order to find out the torque, as you know, the torque is only torque calculation is only possible when you solve the kinetics. Without solving kinetics, you cannot find out the torque because the term itself is a kinematic, kinetic term. So in order to solve the kinetics, you should know the mass property and inertia property. But at the very beginning of your design, it's very difficult to calculate the mass property of inertia property so that you can calculate the torque. If you can calculate that one, you can easily find out mechanical advantage and tell which mechanism is the good one. But very initial stage of your design of a mechanism, finding out mechanical advantage not possible so that is why kinematician propose some other indices which you which is based on the kinematics will also give or reflect some characteristics of the good mechanism so such index is the transmission angle so in practice besides satisfying the kinematic requirement a mechanism should also move freely a complete dynamic force analysis is necessary to check the free running quality but at the early stage of kinematic design we should ensure that the output member receive the large component of the force which is responsible for the torque from the driving member along its direction of the movement and we can express that free running quality of the simple mechanism through an index known as transmission angle so and transmission angle is defined as for a four hour linkage transmission angle is defined as acute angle between the coupler and the follower why because you see that uh, uh, things or when it is in running condition i will show you in, in animated condition the acute angle between the coupler so this is your coupler and this is your follower so two lines so basically two lines so this is coupler and this is follower if, if i tell what is the angle between these two so you, you in many way you can represent either you tell this one or you tell this one both are the angle between these two lines now the here it is transmission angle defined as acute angle between the coupler and the follower it should be the acute angle between the coupler and the follower it's known as a transmission angle now obviously you just see the the force which is responsible for the torque at the output member because you see when you rotate this one crank the force will transmit from crank to the uh, uh, coupler and coupler will push coupler will push along its longitudinal direction that means this is the direction of the push and component of this push which is perpendicular to the output link will create the torque component of this force which will be perpendicular to the output link that means this one will be your which is responsible for the torque if you can maximize this particular component then your torque will increase and how it will maximize any idea when it will be maximum because you know you just see here from the uh, from this simple equation if it is if it is 
gamma that is transmission angle then obviously your this angle is 180 minus gamma total angle is 180 minus gamma now from this line and this line is perpendicular this means 90 degree then how much will be this angle this angle will be 180 minus gamma minus this 90 that means ultimately 90 minus gamma so this angle is 90 minus gamma so the component of this particular coupler force which is perpendicular to your dry, uh, 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 your follower will be the coupler force is say fc fc and the the force which is responsible perpendicular to this link ft so ft equal to fc into cosine of 90 minus gamma it is fc into cos of 90 minus gamma cos of 90 minus gamma means fc equal fc into sine gamma cos 90 minus gamma means sine gamma now when f will be maximum f you know the maximum value of the sine is one no no maximum value of the sine or cosine is one no maximum value how much one one that means ft will be maximum uh, maximum value of ft is possible only fc because sine gamma when sine gamma is maximum when sine gamma is maximum for, for what angle 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree optimal angle is 90 degree optimal angle is 90 degree if it is 90 degree you will get the maximum amount of component of force which is responsible for the torque now my question is, and my question is that will indicate that the, your design is good design because maximum amount of force you can transmit which converts into the torque and the output clear if it is a ft amount is less then much more force you have to apply that means much bigger fc is required to get a same torque suppose i want certain amount of torque in the output link ft now ft in order to get ft if your gamma value is less than 90 degree then fc multiplied by sine gamma that means it becomes lesser that time more fc is required to get a desired ft but if you can keep gamma 90 degree then uh, you will get the maximum amount of force for which is responsible for the torque so your optimal angle is 90 degree but you look it carefully i don't know where it will be now you see which one is your transmission angle in this animation can anyone identify this is your crank coupler and this is follower which one is the transmission angle acute angle between the coupler and the follower so this one is your transmission so this one is a transmission angle each is it constant no no during motion it is not constant no, during motion it is not constant but here my mathematics says if it is your 90 degree then only you will get the maximum then what should be your objective being an engineer what should be your objective first thing Make it, it, uh, it, it, it will be varying during its full cycle yes sir it will vary you cannot stop that one it will vary but being an engineer, what should be your objective so that you will get maximum benefit? Maximum time. Make the maximum angle at each part at, at each time, like each second. You will get more benefit if your this variation of the gamma during one complete cycle is move around the 90, no? If that variation is small and it is very close to 90, it may be plus 90 plus minus something, then you will get more benefit. Clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. If your gamma variation, gamma variation is obvious, but if your gamma variation is 90 plus minus small thing, small uh, degree, that means it is around 90 degrees is varying, say let us say 80 to 100, then instead of uh, gamma varying from 50 to 90, if you vary 80 to uh, 110, then you will get the mo uh, more, uh, it will be more beneficial for you. And 
that design will be the good design if your gamma variation will be close to 90 degree then you can say major amount of force will be transmitted which converts the torque and because of that free running quality you get so without solving kinetics you can say by seeing the transmission angle variation you can say whether your mechanism is free running or that means good quality or not is it okay yes sir okay sir so next yes, sir. is another kinematician proposed it's, uh, it is uh, same as previous only just angle is defined different so another approach is taken by a watch is suggest the working in the direction of the static force that means this one the static force direction and absolute velocity of that means absolute velocity will perpendicular to this link absolute velocity of this per, an angle between these two will term as a direction of deviation so it is similar to it, it basically uh, telling about the direction of the static force is this one that means coupling force direction and direction of the motion of this particular point it is perpendicular to link the linear velocity angle between this will be your deviation angle now what should be that this angle deviation angle now, it is uh, 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 only different angle has been proposed another kind of medicine proposed now what could be this angle so that you will get the maximum benefit zero degree zero degree, zero degree sir zero degree. Zero because zero degree. this direction uh, cosine of this one is this value then it be zero degree cosine of delta so the optimal value will be zero so only that different angle proposed by the another kinematician that is deviation angle but it is both are correlated. Uh, the transmission angle and deviation angle is a there's a correlation. So I like to conclude here uh, the uh, telling your analysis of, uh, in or, or the next class I will tell. I think without ex without extending this one. So I like to stop yes. here. Uh, tomorrow most probably Professor B Haldar I like to start with your. Uh, chapter called uh, slider crank mechanism a little bit of dynamic analysis but before that you have to solve kinematics so you remember first you have to solve kinematics you have to build the relationship between the input and output motion then you can solve the kinetics and uh, please check your, your kinematic diagram kinematic diagram is important for kinematic analysis but for dynamic or kinetic analysis along with the kinematic diagram you should know the actual uh, inertia of the or actual geometry of the mechanism so i like to stop here so if you have any doubt you can tell me otherwise i like to stop my portion stop presenting do you have any doubt any anyone having any doubt Yes, okay then thank you i thank like you, to quit now okay Let's stop recording thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.